Hey everybody, happy new year. We are back, it's 2024. I haven't made a video for a while. That's because I reached my goal, thanks to all of you subscribers. Thank you so much. I had a goal to reach, which was 3000 subs by the end of last year. You guys did it for me, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. It keeps me on target with my 1000 subs a year. Most of last year, I had been very good. Since August last year, actually, I hadn't bought any fragrances at all. <laughs> That's, that's a bit out of the ordinary for me, but nonetheless, I went on a little bit of a hiatus and I thought, yes, I think I have enough. And frankly speaking, I don't have any more room to put these things in. I don't have a, a shelf, as you can see here, it's taken up by other things that are obviously way more important than showing off fragrances in your living room. Therefore, I keep mine in boxes hidden away in little nooks and crannies inside the house. I didn't, I didn't buy any more. However, uh, if you've been keeping up with my channel, I have gone overseas. I've been overseas for quite a while. Well, let's just say we threw caution to the wind and we threw our wallets and our budgets away and I ended up with 23 bottles of fragrance that I bought last month and I'd like to show you what I actually picked up. 23, you might say, you've got a problem, buddy, which is true. I do. We all do. If you're watching this, you probably have a similar problem, but nonetheless, it's a fun problem to have. I went out and I bought these. I bought these because they're hard to find. They're kind of difficult to obtain. And uh, where I was at, I was lucky enough to come across them. And I'll go into more depth about the place I was at, which I'm, I'm not going to mention right now, but some of you may have already guessed uh, what country I'm talking about, specifically what city I'm talking about in the world. And you would never sort of think that that was a perfume mecca or something like that, but it is. I will go into more depth about that particular topic in a separate video, but today I'm simply just going to go through the list of, uh, not the list, but actually the, the 23 fragrances that I picked up. Uh, most were partials, uh, a couple were brand new. A few stories to go along with it, so bear with me. I'm going to try to make this as succinct as possible because there's 23. Let's go. Okay. What do I start with? You know what? I'll start with, I'll start with Chanel. I'll start with Chanel's Ego East, which I have a bottle of over here. Now, this bottle I bought uh, 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 many years back and it's a modern formulation. It is a 2012 bottle. That's what I've actually dated it to. I always wondered what the vintage would be like. So on my travels, I actually found a vintage bottle of Ego East, which is this one right here. I picked up Ego East 100 mil vintage bottle. According to the batch code, this is from 1991. Pretty sure it's 1991 because yeah, Chanel batch codes are a little bit tricky, but there's some really good um, references out there online. Raiders of the Lost Scent, I think is the website that sort of decodes these for you, helps you decode them yourself. It's a very helpful website, very, very, very helpful. And another way that you can tell that this is a vintage is because you see where the placement of the word eau de toilette is above where it says Chanel, that's an oldie. And when it's underneath Chanel, that's one of the newer ones. So that, I haven't really given this one a full wearing, but it smells a lot more in your face. And the juice color is fairly different if that's coming through on the camera to be seen. Very, very much looking forward to this. The more I wear this scent, the more I like it. I'm glad that I've got enough of it. But whilst I was on my sojourn, I also did come across a few more Ego Easts. I actually came across the original, original Ego East, which is called Bois Noir, which means wood black. And the cap was made of wood because it had sort of deteriorated a little bit and I could see the wood grain underneath it, but that was too expensive. So I didn't buy that one. I also saw Lego East, which is the one that came out afterwards. That was also very expensive and I didn't buy that one either, but I did find these two bottles of the Cologne Concentrate of Ego East. And so I picked these up as well. Really, really like this one. It's got an added sort of zing to it and it's it's actually more full on. It is not a cologne, I don't think, because it's pretty strong. To me, it feels like it's got a lot more citrus up the top, but I think that it's more deep in the cinnamon and sandalwood and hell of a lot more spicier. And whilst I was on a bit of a Chanel kick, I actually found this, which is a near full bottle of 50 ml of Allure Om, and you can tell it's uh, a vintage because of the cap. It doesn't have that 
silver ring around the cap. That means it's one of the old ones. How old it is, it's kind of hard to tell because I don't have the box. It could be anywhere up to, I think 2010, I think is when they actually changed the cap or so I believe. But this smells beautiful. As a matter of fact, um, so old that the collar sort of doesn't want to come out. Okay, mm, top notes intact. Everything is delicious. I wore it once and I thought, mm, this is really good. And so when I saw the vintage, I couldn't pass it up. And so I picked that up as well. And to round out my Chanel uh, kick, I also found a very old and very, I think, first year formulation of Antaeus. Poor Om. And I wore this last night. This is an absolute beast because this morning I could still smell it on my arm and I had worn another fragrance on top of it, went out, came back and I could smell this underneath it still. Very, very beastly. Not as animalic as you would think. Um, the top notes still are there and then it sort of smoothed out and became your typical Antaeus. It gets it gets um, compared to Kuros, which I don't know why, because they don't smell very similar at all. Kuros, I just can't do. Antaeus, however, I can do and I will do. And I'm glad to have this one, the uh, silver on the top and the silver sprayer there. And of course, the Eau de Toilette written above where it says Chanel. Telltale signs that this is a vintage. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Give me a little bit of that Balenciaga per om sort of animalic vibe to it. I don't know uh, if I mentioned Kuros. I mentioned Kuros. I'll, I'll come back to Kuros. But all of these fragrances uh, have been created by Jacques Polge, the, the legendary nose uh, that's been the, uh, I guess, the, the resident nose, uh, the resident perfumer at Chanel. He's been the guy behind all of these, amongst some others as well. But he did something for another house before Chanel, or actually not, not before Chanel. He, while well, he was at Chanel and he did this one, which is Tiffany for men. I picked this up just to check it out. This is the Cologne. There is a Cologne Concentré as well. Uh, this has been discontinued. I think a, a lot of what you're gonna see have been discontinued. You probably understand why I picked up 23 bottles. Uh, and this, like I wore it, I put it on the tester strip actually, and I smell it. I was like, oh, I don't know what's going on here. But I think that was just the juice in the tube that had sort of turned a little bit. So when I sprayed a few more times to let the juice in the bottle come out, it had uh, a very lovely, pleasant scent. And I came back to uh, my desk and that piece of um, tester strip was on my desk. And I was thinking, what is that? What is that smell? It's, it's, what is that scent? It is absolutely gorgeous. I can't tell what it is. And then I figured out, oh, it's this tester strip. It's permeating off there. And I swear to God, this smells so much like my bottle of Mitsuko uh, by Guerlain. And I've got the Eau de Cologne of Mitsuko. And that one's a little bit more fruitier. It's got more top notes, but then it settles into that base of oak moss. And this has got oak moss in the base as well. And they smell very similar there. I looked all over the net. I couldn't find anybody comparing the two, but I'm making that, I'm making that call. I'm making that statement right now. This smells like that, very similar to it, very similar base notes. It does share a fair few notes with Mitsuko in the base. They smell very, very similar to me. This one's a little bit more complex and a little bit more masculine. Tiffany for men. Good one. Right, so I said that I would come back to Kuros and I will. I had many different versions of Kuros and um, throughout the years I've sold them all because I tried to live with them. I had the original, the silver shoulders, etc. And the one that I had left was the was a small bottle of the, the time when Gucci PPR took it over. I think it was like formulation number three or four uh, from the early to mid 2000s. And I thought that was the most wearable one that I had smelled so far. But even that disagreed with my nose. A lot of people are gonna hate me for this, but I'm not a fan of Kuros. I don't think it's that, I don't think it's of today's time. I'm, I just can't get over the, the, the urinal cake, cat piss, whatever smell it is that, that it's got with it. However, when I stumbled across this, I thought I would snap it up because the price was right and try it out because, you know, why not? Because I hadn't seen this one around before. This is Kuros Freshure, Freshure Eau de Toilette. I'm also a sucker for frosted bottles and so that's why I got this. But I did wear it 
This has got the citruses amped up. It's a lot fresher in the take in the take of Kuros. It is still Kuros, but the cat piss urinal cake thing has been toned down quite a bit. It is quite strong still, but I think this is a very wearable. I thought I would like sell this, but then I wore it. It's really nice, like really, really nice. So I'm, I'm keeping it. It's a keeper. I'm going to enjoy it. I don't know, whenever, whenever the hell I want, right? At the same time, I also found this, which is Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. Oh. This one, if that can be seen, it is the, oh, this is a, an old tester bottle, as a matter of fact, and it still smells great. I wore this as well um, overseas. It's for like an, almost like an aquatic take of uh, Paco Rabanne's uh, Pour Homme DNA. Uh, it even says on the back, uh, fresh, masculine, and authentic accord. You know, some kind of aquatic watery notes that are in here that give it more of a fresher sort of O oh kind of vibe, O oh meaning water. And it definitely smells like some kind of water, a full 100 ml bottle. Pretty nice. You know, I had a, we had a smelling session. A couple of the boys we get together, of course, you know, um, some, some, some drinks, some food and some fragrances. And so he had brought with him his mother's fragrance, which was a Fendi fragrance. It's just called Fendi or the toilette. I tested it, loved it, loved it so much. Had a look at the price, insane. It's been discontinued, obviously, that's why. And on my travels, I found not one, but two of these, I think 20, 25 ml bottles. They smell great. I wore it, the dry down on this is to die for. Damn, a little bit feminine, I know, but that's never stopped me. That's never stopped you either. So if you like it, if you like what it smells like, and if you've got the cojones and the confidence to pull this off, then by all means, do your best, do your worst, do anything, just do. Now, let's go from Fendi to, let's go from Fendi to Guerlain. Guerlain, I found this. Coriolan. Interesting. Interesting take on a men's fragrance. Really strange why they came out with something like this. Try explaining that this bottle shape, I think they failed in the bottle shape because when I first saw this, I thought this was a women's fragrance. Turns out it's a men's fragrance, you know, because it's kind of like opens like this. Mm. Kind of generic now, but it's, it's nice and herbal. Uh, and I think when it came out, this came out in 1998. And when this came out, and this bottle is from, who cares? Because this did not get a second production run. It got discontinued pretty quickly because it just wasn't popular with the boys, with the men. Because the bottle is supposed to be shaped like a, like a Roman soldier's ball sack. I'm not quite sure. Is it because they've been riding horses and it goes like this? Not quite sure. Something. It's a Roman soldier's something and it just wasn't popular enough in 1998. It wasn't popular enough in 1998. I can see why. Not a bad scent. Not a bad scent. If you've got it, you should wear it because it's still okay as of today, but really nothing special. You know, you'd kind of expect more from you know, a house like Guerlain. I'm still learning this one. Let's just say that. Let's move on from Guerlain. Let's go to YSL. Let's go to YSL. So on my travels, I went to a perfume store and I saw a whole bunch of fragrances and I thought, oh, this is just the generic shit all over again. And wait, what's that? What's that? What's that one over there? That looks a little bit weird. Can I? I had a I'm hambling a look through it. It's in a little glass case. I'm trying to squeeze, like squint underneath it to see what, what the batch code is. And I'm such an idiot. I had the guy in, you know, a different language. So to say, pointing at this bottle saying, can I look at the box? And he gives me the box and I'm looking at the box. And I'm like, it looks pretty legit. This it looks pretty good. And like, I'm looking at the batch code. I'm going, well, the batch code looks pretty legit as well. It's the right weight. Uh, I even smelled it, but it was still wrapped up in plastic. And I noticed, hey, wait a second. It's not wrapped up in the proper cellophane. It's just been sort of shrink wrapped with, with plastic. And I went, hold on. I'm not falling for this trick again. Because last time I actually, because I've been looking for Yves Saint Laurent's Loam, which is this guy over here, original formulation for a long time. Now, this is one of my favorite fragrances. I really adore this fragrance. I think it's been misunderstood. It's got a lot of nuances and people miss it. People miss it. If you wear it long enough, you will, you'll understand how complex this fragrance is. There's a lot more layers to it. And it's not a shouty, screamy fragrance. Everybody sort of laughed at it and pointed at it like, hey, you stupid, because 
things like M7 had come out and Kuros had come out and, and Yves Saint Laurent Paul Om was still around. All these greats before it. And then they come up with this and they're like, what the hell is that? What is this? What is it? And everybody started complaining. They just didn't understand it. It's still in production. So people definitely like it. In its heyday in 2006, I reckon this would have been phenomenal. And I've heard accounts that the original formulation is a lot more deeper, a lot more spicier and a little bit better uh, in terms of longevity. I don't care much about longevity. I just wanted to smell the actual original attempt at the scent. I didn't buy it. I put it back and I went away. Came back like a week later and I just, I just, I was like, oh God, I really, I can't because it's, it was a reasonable price as well. It's a 60 ml bottle and I have not seen any of these around for such a long time. Sorry I'm taking so long because previous time that I actually thought I found the original formulation, I did a video of the unboxing and it went terribly wrong because it, I still got the bottle. And I might actually do a comparison between that, my new formulation, uh, and this one in a different video. But that went terribly wrong. I'll put a link to the card for that video because like I opened it up and, and I was like instantly knew that something's wrong. So with this one, I went back and this time I was like very inquisitive. I said, look, why is this wrapped up differently? They said, oh, look, it just comes to us like that. But it's a legit fragrance. We don't sell fakes. And I said, right, fair enough. And she's like, I'll open it for you. You can have a look at it. Um, if you want to. And so I said, yeah, let's do that. And let's do that here as well. Because I did that and I looked at it. I didn't spray it until I got home. But uh, this, let me get all the fingerprints off it because the cap is a magnet for this, but it looks great without it. All right, so I've done my best here in the few seconds that I've got. There it is. And the way that you know that, uh, that you've got yourself a vintage of this, of course, is the batch code at the bottom, which should have only four digits, and this one does. And it starts with a six, which means this is a 2006 bottle of Yves Saint Laurent's Loam, because um, after, I think, 2010, they went to the, you know, the two numbers, a letter, and then numbers and a letter kind of batch codes instead of the four numbers, right? Or the, the, the four digit ones. The other ways that you can tell is if you pull this cap off, Inside, it is like this instead of all reflective. And this, this is metal. It isn't plastic. So my newer bottle of this, I have a 200 ml bottle from 2018. That's got a plastic cap and the reflective surface goes all the way inside. This is hollow like that. And this is a heavy metal cap. And the collar like this one here, is wide. This is the fat collar or the wide collar. They switched from that to the mm, more narrow collars. I wore this a couple of times. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh my God. It's so good. Love it. It's, it is, it is everything that it was purported to be. Sometimes vintages fall flat, but this was a brand new one. And I'm just hoping that with a few more sprays and letting it macerate for a little bit, it will get even better than what it is now. Amazing. What a find. And all I could think about when I actually did spray this and it ended up being the real deal was that, that Dave Chappelle bit. Gotcha, bitch. That one. Gotcha, bitch. Gotcha, bitch. Okay, so now let's move on to, uh, from Yves Saint Laurent to Gucci. And Gucci is going to take up a bit of time. Okay, so I bought this, another one of these. Uh, this is Gucci Rush for men. It's only got a tiny bit in there to go along with the slightly more than I have in my other bottle. Not a big fan of this, but it just came with another fragrance that I purchased, which I'll show you because it came in a bundle. So that that one's that one's nothing special. I'll tell you what is very special is is Gucci's Accenti or Accenti. This one, if you can make that out. Can you make that out? Uh, Accenti, Accenti, I don't know how to pronounce it, but oh. Okay, so the story with this is, once upon a time, a few years ago, I was bidding on a smaller bottle of this, a 30 mil bottle of this on eBay, and nobody else bid, so I won it for like 30 bucks, and the post office delivered it to someone in my area. And I called them up and I said, I don't have the thing that you've said that you've delivered because I had the tracking number. And they said, oh, apologies, it has been delivered. And I said, where? It said to the address on the uh, on, on the actual package. I said, well, the address is my address and it hasn't been delivered to my address. So I went door knocking up and down my street 
I couldn't find it. And the person that actually got it maybe liked it and they kept it. So there went my bottle of Accenti. The seller was kind enough to just refund it to me. Even, yeah, Australia Post, what can you do? Anyway, I hadn't smelled this. And when I saw it, it was sitting there. It was almost full 100 ml bottle. It's missing the cap. It's supposed to have like a red plastic sort of cap on the top. And I thought, oh... They want quite a bit for this, but it's not as much as what people are asking for on the gray market. And I still had a sore spot for not actually getting the fragrance because I had actually purchased it already and never received it. And so I said, can I test it? And so the lady sprayed it on the tester strip for me, kind enough to do that. And I walked away, walked away as you should to actually let it develop. And I had some of it as she was spraying it on the tester strip, some of it actually caught my fingers. And throughout the day, I'm like, I'm like doing this with my hand and I could catch wafts of it. So good, it's amazing. Like it's, it's really, really good, unbelievably good. So I went back and I bought it love it a little bit feminine but like a, a, a burly feminine you know like a husky burly sort of broad not a girl this is a, a woman woman so i think a man yeah like i said before if you're comfortable with it it's all good sticking with gucci i have a bottle of where is it oh this one i have a bottle of envy of gucci's envy and this is a, a newer formulation of it right it had like i think two or two, I think two or three formulations, right? Uh, and this is the last one that's denoted by the sort of radioactively green juice, uh, which I think looks better than the original yellowish sort of yellowy green sort of color. So yeah, I have one already, but I couldn't pass up the opportunity to get another one. When I saw it, it's actually slightly a bit more full. It is an original formula one from 1998. And then I saw another one. So I got another one. This is gonna be difficult. I might do this somewhere. Um, and then I saw another one. And so I got that too. And then I saw another one and I got that too. Oh God. And then I saw another one. This might be better. I got that too. And then I saw another one. These are all 50 mLs. And I got that too. And I saw one with the foam. So I don't have the foam. So I got that one too. And then I saw a 100 ml bottle. And so I got that one too. And that goes on. Okay. And that's with my original bottle. I think I have enough um, of these now to warrant a, a real sort of intervention session. And uh, for all those who are wondering, if I'm gonna wear these, I probably will. I'm gonna test them all. They all smell okay. Uh, one of them smells a little bit like the top notes are fading, but the rest of them smell pretty smooth and pretty good. I would I would have loved to have found like Carven Ohm. I think that's the better version of this. That's more to my liking anyway, but this, this will do. And the very last one that I bought, I think, so you thought that was the climax. You thought that pulling out sort of nine bottles of Gucci's Envy for Men, was the climax. No, no, it's not. Because I also found a uh, Gucci Envy for women, but they wanted too much money for that. It was a sealed 50 ml bottle. I think they wanted like 260 bucks for it. I thought, yeah, nah, that's too much. But I did find a sealed bottle of this, which is Tom Ford's for men to go with my bottle of Tom Ford for men extreme. I have smelled this once before. I remember liking it a lot. I thought it was so beautiful and this is sealed. So I'm going to do the unboxing of it right now, right now, right here. Amazing that I get to do this to a fragrance that is extremely hard to find and kind of pricey now on the gray market for sure. I just hope that it hasn't. What's this? The box is coming apart. That's not a good sign. Has anything dissipated? Is anything, Ooh, what's this? Ooh, okay, take a good look at that. And this is gonna be my scent of the night. I think, uh, should I actually spray it on skin? This is like really old too. What is the batch code? A, 86. 
Okay, good. This is telling me that this came out in 2016 and uh, the batch codes are repeated every 10 years, which means it could be 2006, but I don't think that's possible because this fragrance was launched in 2007. However, even if a fragrance is launched in, for example, 2007, you can have batch codes that are 2006 because that's the batch code year. However, the fragrance was launched the year after because I know there's some um, Yves Saint Laurent vintages that have done that. So it could be a 2006 or it could be 2016, which I think is around the time that this did get discontinued. So let's, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to wear it. And it smells, it smells amazing. Mm, lemon ginger. Mm, I'm sure it gets better. But the only reason why this probably doesn't have a higher rating is because of its poor longevity, which I don't mind. The smell is just amazing. This is class. Very good. I, I like these Tom Ford bottles. I do. I don't like the private labels or you know all those ones. I like these ones. These were cool. Anyway, that makes 23 fragrances that I've picked up. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of those. And uh, yeah, I'll do some more in-depth stuff about my trip and about the fragrances and about some stuff that are not fragrances. So yeah, as always, thank you for, for watching. Thank you for coming along with me on this journey. And uh, yeah, I'll hopefully find out some more nuances about these fragrances and report back. This has been a long one, but yeah, thanks for staying on. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. For watching.